Jacob preferred Rachel, gave Rachel first place in his, in his life. And so God sees this and opened Leah's womb, and she conceives, and she bears a son in verse 32. Now, uh, childbearing was a very big deal in that ancient culture, as it is in most cultures today, but in particular, bearing sons was very important and highly valued. And not because it was a chauvinistic or patriarchal society. It was much more practical than that. Sons were more valued because the male, the males provided protection for the family. They're Bedouins. They're nomads. And males provided protection for the family. Understand, there was no police department. You could not call 911 if there was an emergency or a crime was in progress. That wasn't an option. The men in the household protected the family. And the men in the household protected the property. The men were the police. The men were the warriors. If you remember earlier in the book of Genesis, when, uh, when invaders come into the land and they take Lot, Abraham's nephew, captive, and they, they, they leave, uh, Abraham rounded up all the men in his household, 318 men, and he formed an army, and he pursued after them, and he went to war. He went to battle to rescue Lot. There, there was no one for Abraham to call. There was no one to report it to. It, it just didn't exist. Abraham formed an army from the men in his house, household and went to war and took care of it and rescued Lot. That, that, that's the way that it was. Men were the protectors. And by the way, it's still that way in, in Bedouin communities and, and the Middle East. It's, it's still, you're, 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 the men in your family protect your family and protect your property. And so because of that, the more sons you had in your family, the better. Sons equaled strength. Uh, Jacob, later on, will describe his firstborn son, Reuben, as the beginning of my strength. Sons equaled strength. Sons equaled power. Sons equaled protection. Sons equaled safety. Having a lot of sons was a deterrent against invaders. Jacob will have 12 sons, which means Jacob becomes very powerful. And very strong. Leah here now, uh, she conceives a son. Look at verse 32. She conceives a son by Jacob. And verse 32 tells us she calls his name Reuben. And Reuben literally means a corned beef sandwich. And then, not really. You know what it means? It means, look, a son. Or it's a boy. Leah understands the value of sons in her culture. She understands that. And it's the firstborn son to Jacob. So her son, she's provided a son for the family, and it's the firstborn son, so he has the, the birthright. Now watch, watch closely what Leah says in verse 32. Leah conceived, bore a son. She called his name Reuben. Then she said, the Lord has surely looked on my affl affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Now my husband will love me. Now that I have provided him with a son, now, now he'll love me. And you're kind of groaning inside right now for Leah, reading that. Verse 33, then she conceived again and bore a son. This is a second son. Again, God's making a great nation of Jacob. He's going to, he's going to give him all these sons, you know, which, which uh, is, is telling us he's, he's powerful. She conceives again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Simeon is from the Hebrew word Shema, which means to hear. The Lord has heard I'm unloved. And so he's given me another son. A second son. Verse 34. 
she conceived again and bore a son and said, now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, his name was called Levi. Levi means uh, attached. Now, now that we have three sons together, my husband will become attached to me. My husband will feel connected to me. Do you see what's, what Leah's doing? Do you see what Leah's doing here? And listen, listen. Do not, do not make the mistake of thinking you can change someone. Do not make the mistake of thinking you can make someone love you. Don't think, if we get married, then he'll change. If we get married, it'll be different. If we get married, he'll stop going out with his buddies on Friday and Saturday night and he'll want to he'll want to stay home and be with me once we're married. No, he won't. Getting married will not change him or change her. Or, or don't don't think, well, once we're married, all the strife and fighting in our relationship will go away. No, it won't. If, if there is a lot of strife and fighting in your relationship while you're dating, there'll be a lot of fighting and strife in your marriage, probably even more so. Don't, don't think, if we have a child together, then my husband will grow up and start acting responsibly. No, he won't. No, he won't. If, if he's not acting responsible now, having a baby will not magically make him Mr. Responsibility. And you will probably resent him even more because you will have to take care of that baby on your own. Or having a child will make her happy. So we'll just have a baby. And then she'll be happy. No, she won't. Or don't think, we just need to move to some place new and make a fresh start and then everything will, will, will get better. You're, you're going to bring whatever baggage you have with you to that new place. <laughs> and you'll have the same baggage just in a new town. Leah could not make her husband love her no matter how many sons she bore for him. She could not change her husband's heart. You cannot change a person's heart. Now, God can change a person's heart. But you can't. Now, look at verse 35. Now, watch what happens here. And she conceived again. And bore a son. Now keep in mind, this is over several years. Now she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing temporarily. Now Judah means praise, as in praise the Lord. Now I will praise the Lord. There is a shift that has occurred in Leah's heart. Initially, Leah hoped that having children would change her husband. The children would make Jacob love her. And every time Jacob didn't respond the way Leah hoped he would, she was disappointed. But now there's a change. Now there's a transition that takes place in Leah's heart where, where now she just praises the Lord. No longer is she hoping to change her husband. No longer is she hoping that her husband will love her. Now, now she's just praising the Lord for the son that God has given her. 